Well, hello everybody out there. Another rainy, stormy day. This hit, we had winds that was gusting 30, 40 miles an hour. They, uh, I can hear some small hail hitting. And they said we had a chance for some larger hail that could possibly come to. And that we could get winds up to 70 miles an hour as we were experiencing another one of those outflow boundaries taking place. Look at the radar, it's kind of unique because this system's coming straight down from Oklahoma from the north and simultaneously at the same time there's a system rising up from the south and they're colliding right here in this Interstate 20 corridor coming across Texas. So uh, that really stirs for some pretty volatile weather. Um, that's just part of it. I bailed hay for days. If y'all wonder what's happened to me, I haven't put out a video. I've just been on the tractor, been on the tractor, been on the tractor, cutting, raking, and bailing um, alone by myself without any help. Some fields. The initial field, I got Cap to come help rake, but after then, I've just been doing everything alone. I cut and when it's time that some of it can be raked and it's drying up, I rake and then I change over and I bell. And that's what I've been doing. Then they call for, for days that we could have bad weather coming in. We had chances the last two days. It really didn't do as much as they said. I probably could have cut some hay, but I was afraid that it may not cure before this came in. So I'm really glad I didn't lay any more down. So I'm inside now, away from all that hard wind and noise and rain outside. And uh, something I haven't shared to you also is I put in a glass patio door here in this dining room on the original part of my house. It originally, years past, had a uh, three foot by four foot window up right there. And then, I didn't like that, it wasn't enough, and I put a walkthrough back door there. Uh, three foot, you know, by seven foot, basically. Walk through the door. It didn't let as much light in as I thought it would. It was mostly door and not as enough glass, even though it was one of those with panels top to bottom. It, it was kind of made it really dark in here. The window definitely always let more light in than that door did. Well, I decided that I was going to put one of these six foot sliding patio doors in here, and that's what I've done. And I really like it. So that's one little addition that's happened here that you guys hadn't seen or known about because I'm always busy. So I cut the wall open and first picked up the door. Then I cut the wall open and I got that in there. I've got some trim out I still need to do. Um, but it's in and we are loving it. I wish it had always been in there. Well, I want to uh, tell you about what we had to go do today. Today is Friday, and I got a call a couple days ago that a family member had left this earth. But to me, he wasn't just any family member. He was a very special family member. His name was Earl Clark. I'm going to hold up uh, this right here where you guys can see him. So this is Earl right here. And as you see there on his cap, World War II veteran. Earl lived to be 94 years old. So isn't that a blessing in itself? 94 years old. And Earl fought in World War II in the Battle of the Bulge. He sure did. He was on a 50 cal and he was down in a foxhole and he was in the Battle of the Bulge and there was a lot of fire that took place right there. They were under heavy fire and Earl's feet froze while he was down in a foxhole trying to protect soldiers there in the Battle of the Bulge with Patton's army. So that is amazing and it's amazing he's lived this long. Boy, listen to that rain outside. Unreal. And I just want to share with you a little bit about him. We've always been proud of him in the family and he left this world. And it was sad that he left this world during a time of what's happening right now because it had effects on his memorial. 
but Earl was a good man. He was a rock solid man. He loved fishing. He loved traveling and he elk hunted with my granddad, with my father, and with some other family members. And he loved being in the mountains. He loved fishing. He loved traveling. I mean, that was his life. He was a farmer. Well, that's what I want to tell you about him. And then I want to tell you the sad thing about today and Earl's uh, memorial. And I'm sorry, I don't have a tripod here and I'm having to hold this camera while I'm recording. I left the tripod down at the back of the shop. Other tripod, I don't know where I left it sitting. And so I caught myself up here with this storm and rain and wanting to talk to you guys. So excuse me if it's a little shaky while I try to hold it with hand and do all of this. Um, so we was, we was talking about Earl and his memorial today. The, the sad thing is about Earl of, of today was that he passed in the time that all of this was going on. And we know what this is. I'm not going to say the word. It's no any sense. I don't even like to give it recognition anymore. Um, but the army, a, a decorated World War II veteran from the Battle of the Bulge underneath Patton's army, and the army could not send nobody out to do the flag ceremony, a gun salute, trumpet, anything with their restrictions underneath this malady that's been going on. And I just think that is sad. I, I think that is extremely sad. But the the gentleman there at the um, Allen Fuller funeral home, they did a great job folding the flag. They played a video gun salute. They played video of trumpet playing and there were some veterans there in the services that stood up and honored him and i tell you what uh, that was pretty good and it was a big appreciation to see that happen elsewhere in the crowd my dad's dear lifelong friend jb davison which is also in his 90s and also a world war ii veteran uh, i had contacted him He's in his mid-90s and lives alone, still running cattle, still running his ranch by himself. Now, no, isn't that, that's, uh, he's all alone out there. Mel and I, we went and visited him a while back, and uh, it's pretty amazing. He is a tough person. So I got a hold of JB. He came there. So we had two World War II vets, two of them. And that that's something else and he gave him a salute too. It's pretty touching. I tell you grown man with tears for real so I was so happy that JB's daughter um, Went down and saw her dad and Sarah did and picked him up and brought him there um, Those men are great men JB is as well and so it was really great that he was able to see his friend off and that there was a service with all this happening. Service was simultaneously uh, broadcasted video stream as well because people that couldn't make it or it wasn't safe for them to with this current malady taking place. Well, that's what I want to share. Um, JB, I, and I could talk about our friend JB a lot. I could talk about Dear Oral a lot. Came as a young man right there. But he's somebody in the family we've always been proud of he has had stories covered on him he's been interviewed through the years he has done great things out there for his whole life and there is no way that i could ever ever hold a candle to that man i tell you he is a monument himself he is amazing so there you go well that that was our day today and we got back from that and you know um, when someone makes it that far in life as much as you as much as you hate to lose that person they gave you more than most people ever get a chance to and at this point it, it was like uh, 
a send off of a friend that you you know it's it's that time you know it's that time it's not like oh he was taken so young he was taken too soon God gave us a bonus round with him we've had a bonus round with him and uh, his his kids his grandkids his great grandkids I mean and it just goes on what a family I, it here may tell but he had a lot of, of um, a lot of family and his marriage with Marie his wife and bless her soul now pray for her right now they they were together 65 years next month would have been 66 if I have that correct amazing absolutely amazing